Hello, my name is Samantha Montalegre and welcome to The Maternity Mentor. Today I'm going to be talking about how to dry up your breast milk. Thanks for joining us. For anyone who doesn't know me, I have been a registered nurse since 2009. I have spent my entire career working in the maternal newborn nursing area, including mother-baby postpartum, NICU, antepartum, and labor and delivery. I have practiced as an IBCLC since 2012 and have been maternal newborn nursing certified since 2013. I have also received specialized training in perinatal mood and anxiety disorders as well as perinatal bereavement. For many women, drying up breast milk can be a very stressful process. Often, this is also a very emotional experience and getting through the process faster is preferred. I hope to answer all your questions on how to dry up your breast milk in the quickest, safest way. For women who have suffered infant loss, this video will apply to you as well. However, some of the verbiage will sound focused on mothers who are providing breast milk to their live infants. This is simply for ease of presenting parts of the information and in no way excludes you from the discussion or the content. I am so sorry for what you are going through and understand how hard this is for you. I hope this helps every mother who is trying to dry up their breast milk. When a woman decides to dry up her breast milk, it is called lactation suppression. It is a highly individual decision and should be supported by friends and family. There are many reasons for choosing to dry up breast milk, which can include personal reasons, medical conditions, needing to take medications that are contraindicated in breastfeeding, your newborn or your baby has died, you experienced a miscarriage or stillbirth. You finished breastfeeding or pumping and a few days later your breasts were full of milk or your baby self-weaned unexpectedly. If you would like to continue to provide breast milk to your baby, you can investigate purchasing human donor breast milk through a certified milk bank. For more information on donor milk, please view our video on the subject. We will link that in the description below. Many women ask how long it takes to, for milk to dry up. The short answer is, it depends. The time frame varies from person to person and method to method. Be patient, it will happen sooner than you realize. Once a woman makes the decision to stop providing breast milk, whether she is pumping or direct breastfeeding, the temptation is to stop all at once. This is usually a very hard decision to make and getting it done with seems to be the easiest way to cope with it. Unfortunately, this can lead to a lot of complications, including pain, engorgement, and even mastitis. It is better to decrease your milk supply slowly and methodically to avoid all these issues. If breastfeeding, start by removing one breastfeeding session a day and wait for a few days before removing another session per day. Continue this until you are no longer breastfeeding. This may take two to three weeks to complete, but your body will slowly get used to less demand and therefore produce less milk. The same process can be used for pumping, but in addition to removing a session, pump one or two minutes less. This is a more natural way for your body to adjust to drying up. Spend lots of time cuddling with your little one so both of you can adjust to the change. All medications should be taken under the guidance of your healthcare provider, even if it's just a quick phone call, because even some of the over-the-counter medications and herbal supplements can have serious side effects. Your provider wants to know how you are drying up your milk to ensure that it is done safely and may even prescribe a medication for you. Sage tea is an often used home remedy that is recommended, however there are no studies to examine its specific effect on milk supply. It is believed to work because it contains a natural form of estrogen. You can use sage from your cabinet to make a tea or buy an over-the-counter product. Drink the tea every six hours for the best effect. 
High doses can cause low blood sugar, nausea, and dizziness. Other herbal supplements that have been shown to assist with drying up a milk supply include chasteberry, parsley, jasmine, and peppermint oil, which is applied topically. It is not known how these herbs will affect a breastfeeding baby or a baby placed skin to skin, so it is essential you get medical advice first. On another note, while not an herbal supplement, vitamin B1 or thiamine, vitamin B6 or peroxidine, and vitamin B12 or cobalamin have been used to suppress lactation. These are best used if no breastfeeding has occurred yet, but it must be taken in high doses. More current research has given conflicting data on whether these even work effectively. Decongestants are an over-the-counter remedy that is commonly used when someone has a cold to dry up secretions and clear a runny congested nose. They also tend to dry up other bodily fluids, which means they can assist in drying up breast milk. There have been some studies to support the use of decongestants, specifically Sudafed, to dry up breast milk. However, it does appear to work better the further along you are in producing breast milk. If using, make sure to get the pseudofedrine version, which is sold behind the counter. Additionally, it should be noted that decongestants have severe side effects if taken incorrectly, including nervousness, dizziness, headache, anxiety, sleep problems, trouble breathing, fast heart rate, hallucinations, psychosis, chest pain, and increased blood pressure. Make sure these are taken under a medical provider's guidance. Some providers will offer you the choice to begin an estrogen-based form of birth control once they determine you want to dry up your milk supply. These pills have been linked to low milk supply, which is why women after birth are offered progestin-only birth control pills if they plan to provide breast milk to their baby. Hormonal contraception does have side effects, but if you are already using oral contraception, this may be the right choice for you. The Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, does not approve the use of birth control for lactation suppression, but it is considered an off-label use. I'm going to briefly mention two other prescription medications that are often talked about online, but I have never personally heard of or seen them prescribed due to their side effects. These medications are brand name Dostinex or Cabergoline and brand name Parladel or Bromocryptine, which both reduce prolactin levels in the body. Prolactin is the milk making hormone that helps boost and maintain a breast milk supply. This can make them extremely effective. However, they must be given under a healthcare provider's guidance. Everyone has heard of cabbage leaves, and most people think it's crazy. However, cabbage has been used for a long time as a non-invasive homeopathic lactation suppressant. While the mechanism of action is unknown, there are numerous reports to say that it is very effective. To use cabbage leaves, start by separating the leaves, washing them, and drying them carefully. Then store them in your refrigerator until you're ready to use them. Place the cold cabbage leaves against your breasts inside your bra. Leave them there until they are wilted, which is usually about two hours. You can use them four to six times per day. Lactation suppression needs to be done carefully, or there can be some complications. These include engorgement, plug ducts, a breast infection called mastitis, and depression. Engorgement is the painful overfilling of a woman's breasts. When this happens, make sure to wear a firm supportive bra. You can hand express a little milk for comfort, but try not to do this too often because breast milk production is supply and demand. If you continue to express milk regularly, your body will continue to bre produce breast milk regularly. If you are experiencing pain, you can take Motrin or Tylenol and you can apply cold compresses for comfort. A plug duct is a small lump that will be sore and the area may be reddened. This is a backup of milk in the breast and if left untreated can lead to mastitis. Apply warm compresses to the area every couple hours and massage the area to release the duct. You may also need to pump to unplug the duct. 
If you cannot unplug the duct within 12 to 24 hours, you need to contact your healthcare provider. Mastitis is a breast infection that needs medical assistance immediately. Signs of mastitis include fever, warmth or redness, general malaise or flu-like feeling, breast swelling, and a burning feeling inside the breast. This is usually treated with antibiotics and close follow-up by your medical provider. Finally, some women will develop depression when drying up their milk supply due to the shift in hormones as well as the situational sadness associated with lactation suppression. Be sure to contact your healthcare provider and advise them of the situation. They may want to check your thyroid levels, your vitamin D levels, or your iron levels to make sure there is no other cause. They will discuss follow-up and treatment options with you if necessary. There are a couple of things you should avoid when trying to dry up a milk supply. The first is binding the breasts, which means to tightly wrap the breasts. This used to be the first recommendation everybody gave to assist with lactation suppression. However, studies have shown that breast binding is not effective. In fact, women who use this technique have more pain and more leaking. It also puts a woman at risk for engorgement, which can lead to mastitis. Second is reducing fluid intake. It is commonly thought that since breast milk is a fluid, if you reduce your fluid intake, your breast milk supply will drop. Women's bodies are designed to produce breast milk even when the woman is starving. The only thing reducing fluid will do is to dehydrate you, which isn't healthy. Getting pregnant is another thing people assume will eliminate breast milk, but many mothers tandem breastfeed their older babies or toddler while pregnant. For more information on breastfeeding during pregnancy, check out our video on this topic. We will link that in the description below. Pumping is another thing not to do. It's tempting to try to pump out some milk when your breasts are feeling overfull, but this can lead to an increase in your milk supply instead of the intended decrease you are looking for. Finally, you need to avoid excessive massaging of the breasts, including during intimate contact, because this can stimulate milk supply. Only massage gently to relieve pain or assist with a plug duct if needed. If you are experiencing pain while drying up your milk supply, there are a few things you can do to relieve your discomfort. First, you can use acetaminophen or ibuprofen pain medication, which you can buy over the counter. An added bonus with ibuprofen is that it helps to reduce inflammation as well. If you are engorged or swollen, a hot shower can help. Now, hot showers can stimulate milk a little, but when engorged, it can help enough milk leak out to reduce pressure and pain, and it just feels relaxing. Always make sure to wear a supportive bra even during sleep until your milk has dried up. It is much more comfortable when your breasts are full to be wearing a firm bra. Finally, cold compresses work very well. They are also commonly used for women who have engorgement or mastitis and can provide amazing pain relief. You can buy a reusable ice pack or just use whatever you have in the freezer, like a bag of frozen peas. You apply them for 15 to 20 minutes every three to four hours. Drying up breast milk can be a process both physically and emotionally. I hope this has informed you how to safely dry up your milk supply in a quick and efficient manner with little to no discomfort. Please share your comments and let us know what topics you would like to hear more about. If you like this content, remember to hit that like button and subscribe so you can be the first to receive this information. Remember, share this channel with your friends and family and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for additional content. We will link those in the description below. Thank you so much for joining us at The Maternity Mentor.